Want to speak real Chinese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at ChineseClass101.com. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Kate. Today we're going to learn a very famous Chinese song called Tian Mi Mi, Sweet Honey. Let's just get started. Tian Mi Mi, Ni Xiao De Tian Mi Mi. Tian Mi Mi, Ni Xiao De Tian Mi Mi. Sweet, your smile is so sweet. Tian Mi Mi means sweet honey or sweet. And xiao means smile, smile, xiao. Next one. 好像花儿开在春风里，开在春风里。好像花儿开在春风里，好像花儿开在春风里，开在春风里。好像 means it's just like, it's just like. 花儿，花儿 means Flowers, flowers, and 在春风里，在春风里 means in spring, in spring. All right, go on. 在哪里，在哪里见过你？在哪里，在哪里见过你 ？Where, where have I met you? 在哪里，在哪里 means where, where. 见过你。见过你，见过你 means have met you, have met you. 你的笑容这样熟悉，你的笑容这样熟悉，你的笑容这样熟悉。Your smile is so familiar. 你的笑容，你的笑容 means your smile, your smile. 笑容 ，smile. 这样熟悉，熟悉。熟悉 or 熟悉，熟悉 or 熟悉 ，both correct. Means familiar, familiar. 我一时想不起啊，在梦里。我一时想不起啊，在梦里。I cannot remember it now. Ah,、uh, it's in my dream. 想不起，想不起 means cannot remember, cannot remember. 在梦里，在梦里 in my dream, in my dream. 梦，梦 means dream, dream. Next one. 梦里，梦里见过你，甜蜜，笑得多甜蜜。梦里，梦里见过你。甜蜜，甜蜜，笑得多甜蜜。In my dream, I met you. In my dream, sweetly, you smile so sweetly. 梦里，梦里 means in my dream. In my dream, 见过你，见过你 met you, met you. 笑得多甜蜜，笑得多甜蜜 means smile sweetly, smile sweetly, or smile so sweetly. 是你。是你，梦见的就是你。是你，是你，梦见的就是你。是你，是你 ，It's you。是你 means it's you。梦见的就是你。You are the one in my dream。在哪里，在哪里见过你？你的笑容这样熟悉，在哪里，在哪里见过你？你的笑容这样熟悉。We have already learned this sentence, right? Where have I met you? Your smile is so familiar. 我一时想不起啊，在梦里，我一时想不起。啊、uh, ，在梦里。I cannot remember it now. Ah,、uh, it's in my dream. 想不起 means cannot remember. Cannot remember. 在梦里，在梦里。It's in my dream. In my dream. All right, let's try the whole song. 甜蜜蜜，你
小的甜蜜蜜，好像花儿开在春风里，开在春风里，在哪里，在哪里见过你？你的笑容这样熟悉，我一时想不起。啊，在梦里，梦里，梦里见过你，甜蜜，笑得多甜蜜，是你。是你，梦见的就是你，在哪里，在哪里见过你？你的笑容这样熟悉，我一时想不起。啊，在梦里。The lyrics of this song are very, very easy, and I think they are so romantic and sweet. You guys could sing this song to your girlfriend or boyfriend, and I think that will be so romantic. If you guys like Chinese songs, please don't forget to leave a comment. Let me know. I will make more videos to teach you guys Chinese songs. And if you like this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and. Subscribe. Bye bye. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Kate. So this is my first time to teach Chinese here. I'm so excited, and I hope you guys enjoy. So today we are going to learn some words and sentences about fruits. Well, so what is the first important thing we need to do? We need to get some fruits. Let's go. Welcome back. I'm home now. Check what I've got. First one. What is this? This is orange, right? Orange. Follow me. 橘子，橘子，橘子，橘子 means orange. Orange. 橘子，橘子 Very good. So how to say? Oranges are my favorite fruit. Oranges are my favorite fruit. Follow me. 橘子是我最喜欢的水果。橘子是我最喜欢的水果。最喜欢的，最喜欢的 means favorite. Favorite. 水果 means fruit. Fruit. So the whole sentence will be: 橘子是我最喜欢的水果。橘子是我最喜欢的水果。Next one. What is this? What is this? This is apple, right? Apple. Follow me. 苹果，苹果，苹果，苹果 means apple, apple. 苹果 Apples are good for health. Apples are good for health. 苹果有利于身体健康。苹果有利于身体健康。有利于，有利于 means be good for, be good for. 有利于，苹果有利于身体健康。Apples are good for health. Apples are good for health. Next one, jam jam. What is this? This is banana, right? 香蕉，香蕉 Follow me. 香蕉 Very good. So how to say bananas are very sweet? 
，香蕉很甜，香蕉很甜，香蕉很甜。甜 means sweet. 甜 means sweet. 香蕉很甜。Bananas are very sweet. All right. What is this? This is mango. Mango, right? Follow me. Mango, mango, mango. Mango means mango, mango. All right. I like mangoes very much, but my mom doesn't like mango. I like mangoes very much, but my mom doesn't like mangoes. 我很喜欢芒果。但是我的妈妈不喜欢芒果。我很喜欢芒果，但是我的妈妈不喜欢芒果。喜欢 means like, like. 喜欢 means like. 不喜欢，不喜欢，不喜欢 means don't like or doesn't like. 不喜欢，不喜欢，喜欢，喜欢 like. 不喜欢，不喜欢 doesn't like, doesn't like. The last one. Pear, pear, 梨，梨 or 梨子，梨子，梨 or 梨子。I don't really like pears. 我不是很喜欢梨。我不是很喜欢梨子。我不是很喜欢梨 or 我不是很喜欢梨子。I don't really like pears. So, what is your favorite fruit? Please leave a comment. Let me know. 你最喜欢的水果是什么？留言告诉我吧。你最喜欢的水果是什么？留言告诉我吧。And if you like this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. See you next time. Bye bye. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Kate. Today we're going to learn a very delicious Chinese food: spicy fried potatoes. 今天我们要做一道非常美味的中国菜——辣炒土豆。Follow me. 辣炒土豆，辣炒土豆 ，spicy fried potatoes. 首先，我们要准备。Firstly, we need to prepare 土豆，土豆 ，potatoes， 姜，姜 ，ginger， 蒜，蒜 ，garlic， 干辣椒。干辣椒 ，dried red pepper， 辣椒粉，辣椒粉 ，chili powder， 花椒，花椒 ，Sichuan pepper， 盐 ，salt， 酱油 ，soy sauce， 醋 ，vinegar， 油 ，oil。然后我们需要把土豆切丝，泡在水中。然后我们需要把土豆切丝，泡在水中。Then we need to shred the potatoes and dip them into water. 准备好一切之后，就可以开始做了。After preparing all of these things, we could get started. 第一步，混合辣椒粉和盐。第一步，混合辣椒粉和盐。First step, mix the chili powder and salt. 然后热锅烧油。将油倒入辣椒粉中，然后热锅烧油，将油倒入辣椒粉中。And then heat the pan with oil and pour the oil into the chili powder. <音>这就是我们需要的辣椒酱，它非常重要。这就是我们需要的辣椒酱，它非常重要。This is the chili sauce we need, and it's very important. 第二步，再次热锅烧油。第二步，再次热锅烧油。Second step, heat the pan with oil again. 然后加入姜、蒜、干辣椒和花椒翻炒。然后加入姜、蒜、干辣椒和花椒翻炒。And then add ginger, garlic, dried red pepper, and Sichuan pepper to stir fry. 第三步，现在加入土豆丝一起翻炒，大约一分钟。第三步，现在加入土豆丝一起翻炒，大约一分钟。
Third step, add the shredded potatoes and stir fry them about one minute. Please pay attention. 把土豆切成丝，把土豆切成丝 ，shred the potatoes. And 土豆丝，土豆丝 means shredded potatoes. 第四步，倒入刚才做好的辣椒酱，并加入酱油和醋。第四步，倒入刚才做好的辣椒酱，并加入酱油和醋。Four step. Pour the chili sauce we made and add some soy sauce and vinegar. Okay, it's done. 大功告成。现在我们可以享用美味的辣炒土豆了。现在我们可以享用美味的辣炒土豆了。Now we could enjoy the delicious spicy fried potatoes. 如果你喜欢辣的食物，一定不要错过这道菜。如果你喜欢辣的食物，一定不要错过这道菜。If you like spicy food, don't miss this dish. 我非常喜欢这道菜，因为辣的食物就是我的最爱。我非常喜欢这道菜，因为辣的食物就是我的最爱。I really like this dish because spicy foods are my favorite. 我来自四川。有一个词语“辣妹子 ”（spicy girl） 就是用来形容四川的女生。I came from Sichuan, and there is a word "la mezi." It is always used to describe Sichuan girls. It means spicy girls. 因为大部分的四川女生都喜欢辣的食物。因为大部分的四川女生都喜欢辣的食物。Because most of Sichuan girls love spicy food. 并且四川的女生就像辣椒一样热情又随和，并且四川的女生就像辣椒一样热情又随和。And Sichuan girls are just like red peppers, enthusiastic and easygoing. 热情的 means enthusiastic， 随和的 means easygoing。热情的，随和的。Have you ever met a 辣妹子？你有遇见过辣妹子吗 ？Please leave a comment to let me know. 留言告诉我吧。All right, so it is today's Chinese class. I hope you guys like Chinese food. And if you like my videos, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. See you next time. Bye bye. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Kate. Today we're going to cook a Chinese food: 番茄鸡蛋面，番茄鸡蛋面 ，tomato and egg noodles. 番茄 means tomato. 番茄 or you could say 西红柿西红柿 So 西红柿鸡蛋面 is the same with 番茄鸡蛋面 right? 鸡蛋鸡蛋 means egg. 面 means noodle. 面 Firstly, we need to prepare. 首先，我们需要准备番茄 tomato, 鸡蛋 egg, 面面条 noodle， 盐 salt， 酱油 soy sauce， 油 oil， 姜 ginger， 蒜 garlic， 白砂糖 white sugar， 白砂糖。第一步，搅拌鸡蛋并放入一些盐。第一步，搅拌鸡蛋并放入一些盐。First step: stir the egg and add some salt. Second step: 热锅烧油，快速翻炒鸡蛋。第二步，热锅烧油，快速翻炒鸡蛋。Second step: heat the pan with oil and stir fry the egg quickly.
三步，放入番茄和蒜翻炒，并加入一些水和白砂糖。第三步，放入番茄和蒜翻炒，并加入一些水和白砂糖。Third step, stir fry the tomatoes and garlic, and add some water and white sugar. And then take out the fried tomatoes and the eggs. Fourth step: remove the water and cook for about three minutes. 第四步，把水烧开，放入面条，煮大约三分钟。Fourth step: boil the water and add some ludo sin. Cook for about three minutes. 第五步，在碗中放入姜、蒜、酱油和盐。第五步，在碗中放入姜、蒜、酱油和盐。Fifth step: add ginger. Garlic, soy sauce, and salt into a bowl. 第六步，放入面条和西红柿炒蛋，再加一点水。第六步，放入面条和西红柿炒蛋，再加一点水。Sixth step, put the noodles and fried eggs and tomatoes in and add some water. 番茄鸡蛋面是一道传统又受欢迎的中国菜。番茄鸡蛋面是一道传统又受欢迎的中国菜。Tomato and egg noodles is a traditional and popular Chinese dish. 传统的，传统的 means traditional。受欢迎的，受欢迎的 means popular。烹饪方法很简单，食材也容易找到。烹饪方法很简单，食材也容易找到。Its cooking recipe is easy to follow, and the ingredients are easy to come by. 做番茄鸡蛋面大约只需要花费十分钟。做番茄鸡蛋面大约只需要花费十分钟。It will only take about ten minutes to cook tomato and egg noodles. 做这道菜的关键在于选择新鲜多汁的番茄。做这道菜的关键在于选择新鲜多汁的番茄。The key point of this recipe is to choose fresh tomatoes with large amount of fresh juices. 如果你没有选到好的番茄，那么加一勺番茄酱也可以。如果你没有选到好的番茄，那么加一勺番茄酱也可以。If you failed to do that, you could add one tablespoon of ketchup. 番茄酱，番茄酱 means ketchup. 番茄酱，我通常会把番茄鸡蛋面作为我的早餐。我通常会把番茄鸡蛋面作为我的早餐。I usually take tomato and egg noodles as my breakfast. 早餐，早餐 means breakfast. 早餐，因为它既美味又能为我提供丰富的营养。因为它既美味又能为我提供丰富的营养。Because it's delicious and it provides rich nutrition for me. 丰富的营养 rich nutrition. 丰富的营养 Okay, so it is today's Chinese class. It is very easy, right? 很简单，对吧？很简单，对吧 ？If you want to learn more Chinese food, please leave a comment to let me know. And if you like my videos, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. See you next time. Bye bye. Want to speak real Chinese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at ChineseClass101.com. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Kate. Today we're going to learn some Chinese buzzwords in 
2019. Let's just get started. All right, so the first word, the first word, 杠精. 杠精 means contrary. 杠精, we usually use this word to describe people who always argue for the sake of arguing. So we always say, 别和他争论,他就是个杠精. 别和他争论,他就是个杠精. It means don't argue with him, he's just a contrarian. All right, so the second one, 硬核, 硬核, it means cruel and doughty, cruel and doughty, 硬核, 你就是个硬核女孩, 你就是个硬核女孩, you are such a cruel and doughty girl, 你就是个硬核女孩. Next one, 我酸了, 我酸了 means I am jealous, 这对情侣太甜蜜了, 我酸了,这对情侣太甜蜜了,我酸了。The couple is very sweet, I am so jealous. Next one, 脱粉, 脱粉, it means someone is not a star's fans anymore, 脱粉, so we always say, 他不是我的偶像了,我已经脱粉了,他不是我的偶像了,我已经脱粉了。It means, She's not my idol and I am not her fans anymore. Next one, 我太难了, 我太难了. It means it's so hard for me. Alright, so we always say, 今天我已经工作了十个小时了, 我太难了. 今天我已经工作了十个小时了, 我太难了. It means I have been working for 10 hours today. It's so hard for me. Next one, 佛系青年, 佛系青年. It means good like youngster. 佛系青年, we usually use this word to describe people who become less ambitious and more casual toward life. 我住哪里都无所谓,我就是个佛系青年。我住哪里都无所谓,我就是个佛系青年。It doesn't matter where I live, I'm just a Buddha-like youngster. Alright, so the last one. 咱也不知道,咱也不敢问。咱也不知道,咱也不敢问。I have no idea and I dare not ask. 我不知道他在说什么。I don't know what is he talking about, and I have no idea, and I dare not ask. Alright, so how many buzzwords have you learned today? Let's get some reviews. 杠精, 杠精, contrarian, contrarian, 别和他争论, 他就是个杠精, 别和他争论, 他就是个杠精 Don't argue with him, he's just a contrarian 硬核, 硬核 Cruel and doughty 你就是个硬核女孩, 你就是个硬核女孩. You're such a cruel and doughty girl 我酸了, 我酸了. I'm jealous 这对情侣太甜蜜了, 我酸了. 这对情侣太甜蜜了,我酸了。The couple is very sweet and I am so jealous. 脱粉,脱粉。Someone is not a star's fans anymore. 他不是我的偶像了,我已经脱粉了。他不是我的偶像了,我已经脱粉了。She is not my idol and I am not her fans anymore. 我太难了。我太难了, it's so hard for me. 今天我已经工作了十个小时了,我太难了。今天我已经工作了十个小时了,我太难了。I I have been working for 10 hours today, it's so hard for me. 佛系青年, 佛系青年, good like youngster. 我住哪里都无所谓,我就是个佛系青年。我住哪里都无所谓,我就是个佛系青年 It doesn't matter where I live, I'm just a Buddha-like youngster 咱也不知道,咱也不敢问 
，咱也不知道，咱也不敢问。I have no idea, and I dare not ask. 我不知道他在说什么，咱也不知道，咱也不敢问呢、啊。我不知道他在说什么，咱也不知道，咱也不敢问呢、啊。I don't know what is he talking about. I have no idea, and I dare not ask. Okay, so it is today's Chinese class. If you want to learn more Chinese buzzwords, please leave a comment. Let me know. And if you like my videos, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. See you next time. Bye bye. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Kate. Today I will show you top ten Chinese snacks. Let's just get started. Oh, all right. The first one. 大白兔奶糖，大白兔奶糖 ，White Rabbit Creamy Candy. Let's try it. Okay, so this one, 大白兔奶糖 Okay, I really like it. It's very very sweet. 非常的甜幸福的味道。<laughs> Almost all Chinese children like 大白兔奶糖 If you don't believe, just try it. Second one, 美好时光海苔 Sweet our seaweed. Now let me try. All right, so it's just like this. Not bad. It's just normal seaweed. Next one, very special. 辣条 spicy gluten. 辣条 Now I will try this. It's my favorite. 酱酱 All right, so it's very very spicy, but I pretty like spicy food. So yes, 辣条 is my favorite. Now I will try. It's very special. I don't know whether you can buy 辣条 in your country, but it's very popular in China. All right, next one. 小米锅巴，小米锅巴 minute crisp. It's just like chips. Now let me try. All right, so it it's really like this. Very cute. Mm, yes, just like chips. Sorry, I just can't not stop. It's really, really delicious. I pretty like it. Next one, 小小酥，小小酥 So it's one kind of popping food. All right. So yes, a cute little 小小酥 Mm. Pretty good. I bet you will like it. I like it. Next one, 溜溜梅，溜溜梅 It is made of plum. It's very very sour, but I like it. I like sour and spicy food. So yes, 溜溜梅 is one of my favorite. This one, 溜溜梅 Okay, so look at it. Mm. Very stylish.
sour and a little sweet. Also, this one, Wang Wang Xian Bei, Wang Wang Xian Bei. It is also one kind of popping food. And when I was very young, I pretty, pretty like this. Okay, so Wang Wang Xian Bei. It's a little salty, but very, very delicious. Amazing food. Okay, one of my favorite snacks again. Next one, Wang Zai Xiao Man Tou Crunch Rice Balls. Very cute, this one. Little rice balls. Crunch rice balls. It's very sweet, mm, but actually, I don't really like it. Mm. QQ Tang, QQ Tang, QQ Gummy Candies. Alright, so look. Very soft. Mm. That's great. Sweet and a little sour. I think girls will like it. Okay, the last one. Yu tofu. Yu tofu. Fish with bean curd. You have to try this. It's really, really great. Right, so this one is a little spicy. Hmm. Yes, it's just like tofu. Hmm. Very delicious. All right, now please leave a comment. Let me know. What Chinese snacks do you want to try? Please leave a comment, leave a comment. And okay, it is today's Chinese class. If you want to know more Chinese culture or more Chinese food, please leave a comment, let me know. And if you like my videos, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. See you next time. Bye-bye. Welcome to Fun and Easy Chinese by ChineseClass101.com. Hi, 大家好,我是李英如. Hi everybody, in Ruli here. Can you say and sing happy birthday in Chinese? If you're a Chinese learner and if you enjoy celebrating birthdays, happy birthday is a must-know phrase for you to learn. In this lesson, you will learn how to say happy birthday in Chinese and how to sing the happy birthday song in Chinese in two ways and some other phrases to wish someone a happy special day. Happy birthday in Chinese is 生日快乐. 生日快乐. The first phrase 生日 means birthday. 生日. And the second one 快乐 means happy. 快乐. So together 生日快乐. Birthday, happy. Or in the English order, happy birthday. 生日快乐. If you'd like to wish someone a happy certain year old birthday, you can add the year before 生日快乐. For example, happy three-year-old birthday is 三岁生日快乐. 三 means three, and 岁 means year or age. 三岁, three-year-old, and 三岁生日快乐. Happy three-year-old birthday. 三岁. 生日快乐 and 三十岁生日快乐 is happy 30 year old birthday 三十 means 30 三十 三十岁生日快乐 in China like many other countries around the world people like to gather around the birthday cake and sing the happy birthday song to the birthday boy or girl before blowing out the candles the sound is the same melody as everybody knows. 
and there are two versions of lyrics of this song. The more simple version, which is the most commonly used one, has only one phrase, and this phrase is repeated four times throughout the song. This phrase is 祝你生日快乐 祝你生日快乐 The second part of this expression, 生日快乐, we already know, meaning uh, it means happy birthday. The first part, 祝你, means wish you. 祝 means to wish. 祝 and 你 is you. 你 together. 祝你生日快乐 To put 祝你生日快乐 to the melody, it goes like this. 祝你生日快乐 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 There is another version of the Chinese happy birthday song with a few more phrases. Growing up in China, I did not know this version of happy birthday until I went to a karaoke place and saw the added phrases. This version or this set of lyrics are not um, used quite as often, but it's good for you to know and learn a couple more Chinese phrases. The lyrics go like this. 祝你生日快乐 祝你生日快乐 祝你幸福, 祝你健康, 祝你前途光明, 祝你生日快乐, 祝你生日快乐, 祝你幸福, 祝你健康, 拥有温暖家庭。the first new phrase in this set of lyrics is 祝你幸福 祝你幸福 We know 祝你 is wish you And the second phrase 幸福 means happy or blessed 幸福 together 祝你幸福 Wish you happy 祝你幸福 And the next 祝你 is 祝你健康 祝你健康 健康 means healthy. 健康 So, 祝你健康 is wish you good health. 祝你健康 And the one after 祝你健康 is 祝你前途光明 祝你前途光明 前途 means, uh, literally means the road ahead. But it's often translated as future. 前途 The next one, 光明 means um, bright 光明 前途光明 a bright future 祝你前途光明 wish you a bright future 祝你前途光明 well the last phrase of this version of lyrics is 拥有温暖家庭 拥有温暖家庭 拥有 the first phrase means to have or to possess 拥有 温暖 means warm 温暖 Last, 家庭 means family 家庭 All together, 拥有温暖家庭 To have a warm family 拥有温暖家庭 Now let's read the whole lyrics together 祝你生日快乐 祝你生日快乐 祝你幸福 祝你健康 Wish you happy, wish you health, wish you good health. 祝你前途光明, wish you a bright future. 祝你生日快乐, 祝你生日快乐, 祝你幸福, 祝你健康, 拥有温暖家庭, have a warm family. Well, ready to sing it? Let's sing it together slow. 祝你生日快乐 祝你生日快乐, 祝你幸福, 祝你健康, 祝你前途光明, 祝你生日快乐, 祝你生日快乐, again, 祝你幸福, 祝你健康, 拥有温暖家庭, not only on birthday do we wish others happiness, there are many other special days we can say happy special day to each other. In Chinese, holiday greetings also use the phrase 快乐, and the pattern is holiday, 
plus 快乐 For example, 新年 is New Year. 新年新 means new, and 年 means year. 新年快乐 is Happy New Year. 新年快乐 Well, even though celebrating Christmas is not a tradition in China, Chinese people still are familiar with Christmas and love the Christmas spirit. You can wish others a Merry Christmas by saying "Sheng Dan Kuai Le," meaning "Merry Christmas." Sheng Dan is Christmas. Sheng Dan, Sheng Dan Kuai Le, Merry Christmas. You can use this、um, special day plus. Quite a little pattern on anniversaries as well. Happy anniversary in Chinese is 周年快乐周年快乐周 means a circle. 周 and 年 means year. 周年 a circle year or anniversary. 周年快乐 happy anniversary. 周年快乐 We can add more information before 周年快乐 like we did with 生日快乐。结婚十周年快乐 is Happy tenth wedding anniversary. 结婚十周年快乐。结婚 means to get married or to be married. 结婚 and next 十 is a number meaning ten. 十 So, 结婚十周年 means to be married for ten years or the tenth anniversary, the tenth year of being married. 结婚十周年快乐 Now let's review the key phrases we learned in this lesson. The four character、um, phrase for happy birthday is 生日快乐生日快乐 If the person you're saying 生日快乐 to is turning three years old, the more specific phrase you can use is 三岁生日快乐三岁生日快乐 And how about the phrase for wish you? 祝你祝你 And how do you say wish you a happy birthday like in the happy birthday song? 祝你生日快乐！祝你生日快乐 ！We can use this special day plus 快乐 pattern to say Happy New Year, which in Chinese is 新年快乐，新年快乐 ！Great job! Want to learn the language fast with PDF cheat sheets? You can get cheat sheets for all kinds of topics, travel, hobbies, love, and much more. And you will learn all of the must-know words and phrases for each. So click the link in the lesson description and sign up for a free lifetime account to get them. That will be all for this lesson. 祝你天天快乐 Wish you happy every day. 再见 Thank you for watching. Hi everyone. Do you know how to introduce yourself in Chinese? Today we are going to learn ten lines for introducing yourself. 我的名字是雨婷。My name is 雨婷。我的名字是 My name is. The more casual way to say your name is, 呃、uh, ，我叫雨婷。啊、uh, ，I'm called 雨婷。你好，很高兴认识你。Hello, nice to meet you. 你好，很高兴认识你。您好。呃、uh, ，you just can use 您好 to the respectable person. For example, your teacher, your leader. Uh, but you can't use in the same generation, friends. If you want to use for friends, you can use 你好 You can say like that. 你好，很高兴见到你 Or 你好，很高兴认识你我来自中国 I'm from China. 我来自中国 I'm from China. And if you want to introduce more about yourself,、uh, because China is so big. I want to say that I came from the north part of China. Oh,、uh, 我来自中国的北方。我住在北京。I live in Beijing. 我住在北京。I live in Beijing. When you introduce yourself, you can use 我住在。哼哼哼。For myself, I live in 呼伦贝尔
。我住在呼伦贝尔，呼伦贝尔 is my hometown. Please visit my hometown, 呼伦贝尔 You are super welcomed. 我是一名学生 I'm a student. 我是一名学生 You can tell you occupation, your career. For example, are you a teacher? You can say, 我是一名老师 And if you are an engineer, you can speak, 啊，我是一名工程师。呃，医生 doctor, lawyer, 律师。And、uh, if you work for government, you can speak. Uh, 我是公务员。<laughs> 我二十四岁。I'm twenty-four years old. Okay, next one. Tell your age. Ha ha ha. Maybe sometimes you don't want to tell your age, but it's okay. 我今年二十四岁。I'm twenty-four years old. 我的爱好是摄影。My hobby is photography. 我的爱好是摄影。My hobby is photography, and also I love travel. 呃、uh, ，而且我也喜欢旅行。你喜欢旅行吗 ？Do you like to travel? 我喜欢听音乐。I enjoy listening to music. 我喜欢听音乐。I enjoy listening to music, and also I also enjoy cooking. 我喜欢做饭。And watching movie, 看电影。我学习中文已经二十四年了。I have been learning Chinese for twenty-four years. 我学习中文已经二十四年了。I have been learning Chinese for twenty-four years. How long have you been studying Chinese? 你学中文多长时间了？我的梦想是成为一名中文老师。My dream is to be a Chinese teacher. 我的梦想是当一名中文老师。My dream is to be a Chinese teacher. So here I am. I hope you can enjoy my lesson. 我希望你们喜欢我的中文课。<laughs> okay, guys, that's all for today's lesson. Today we learned ten lines you need for introducing yourself. When learning a new language, everyone should have an ultimate goal to work towards. Whether you want to be able to connect with a relative, easily order food while traveling, or go somewhere new, having an end goal for your learning can be very motivating. A popular but challenging goal is being able to speak like a native speaker. It's difficult to measure exactly when you reach this goal, and it's not something you can pick up using textbooks alone. So, how do you work on making your speech more natural? That's what we're going to look at today. Here are three tips to help you practice talking like a native speaker. Number one, focus on vocabulary. If your goal is to speak like a native, you might be really focused on speaking quickly or using as many complex grammar patterns as possible. But in our native languages, we're not always trying to speak as fast as possible, and we use complex grammar patterns when necessary, not to show off. Vocabulary, however, is extremely important to expressing ourselves naturally. Your choice of words can reveal a lot about you and your understanding of the language. Most learners have had the experience of using a phrase book or a dictionary to find a word they want to use, trying the word in conversation, and getting a look of confusion from the native speaker. In some cases, although your word choice may be grammatically correct, the word may be inappropriate for the situation or totally unnatural. This is especially important in business and other formal situations, where the right level of formality and professionalism is key. Being able to understand nuances in vocabulary words can also help you understand relationships between people just by listening to the conversation. Try to listen to many different types of conversations. Listen to how people talk to their friends, their superiors, and in customer service situations. This will give you a better idea of how to talk to others naturally. In some languages, you can omit words from sentences or use more direct communication styles. It's important to be aware of these things so you can apply them yourself. Colloquialisms and slang are also commonly used in most languages. As this sort of vocabulary is always evolving, it can be difficult to keep up with the latest words. Talk with native speakers and consume media in your target language to make sure you pick up these kinds of expressions. Media is a great resource for your learning. Ultimately, knowing the appropriate vocabulary to use for each situation will really help you sound more knowledgeable. Number two, perfect your accent. 
With every language, there are unique pronunciation and intonation challenges. Some languages are tonal languages, and a change in pitch can completely change the meaning of a word. Then there's the fact that most countries have multiple dialects, and so people from one area of the country may sound different from those in another. So what is the best way to listen to a wide range of accents and different pronunciations? Video and audio resources are a great way to do this. YouTube is a perfect place to start because people from all kinds of different backgrounds upload videos to the platform. You can watch educational videos, daily life vlogs, cooking shows, a travel series, whatever interests you. Pay attention to the different ways people speak. Everyone is unique. And then practice speaking like them. This kind of practice can help you sound more natural. One note, please be aware of the type of resources you're using. For example, if you find a video where a speaker uses a rare dialect, it might not be a good idea to use that for your pronunciation practice, unless you have a special reason for studying a specific accent. As a general rule, it's best to try to search for practice resources that use a standard form of the language you're studying. Number three, copy what you hear. Do you remember how you learned to speak as a child? We rarely learned new words just listening to them or reading after we learned how. When we were little kids, we imitated the sounds we heard by repeating the sounds out loud. While you're talking to a friend, watching videos, or listening to audio in your target language, you can do this to try and replicate the way they speak. Doing this will help you work on mastering the flow of the language, your accent, intonation, and pronunciation. Of course, you might also pick up some new vocabulary this way. Make sure to repeat new words often. It's a great way to make sure you remember them. Try doing this using a number of different mediums and sources. That way, you'll be exposed to the diversity that the language offers and master the fundamentals of pronunciation. For example, you can watch and imitate several different YouTube videos and audio CDs, but try a few different sources, like different creators or different audio types, to make sure you experience a wide range of communication in your target language. If you're using our language learning program, you can even get your own teacher with Premium Plus. Your teacher can answer questions, give assignments, and even listen to your recordings and give you advice on pronunciation. Completing these kinds of lessons with a native teacher can really boost your confidence in your speaking skills. Becoming able to speak like a native is a popular goal for many people learning a new language. It feels great to be able to communicate smoothly, especially when the people you're talking to expect basic level sentences or broken communication. Try using the tips we've shared in this video to work on improving your speaking skills. Of course, it'll take time and persistence, but the reward will be more natural communication. And for even more tips on speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Want to know how to improve your listening and speaking skills, be able to save conversations, listen to them as many times as you want, and learn hundreds of practical everyday conversations? Well, there is an easy way to do this. In this video, we'll go over how to speak more using the dialogue track. So, what is the dialogue track? The dialogue track is an audio track with just the conversation from the lesson. It's only about 10 to 30 seconds long. Let's say you're looking at a five-minute lesson about ordering food at a restaurant. First, you hear a conversation. Then our teachers explain every grammar rule and translate every word, so you know what it all means. That's where the dialogue track comes in. It gives you just the conversation. Here's what makes the dialogue track so powerful. First, you can quickly review the conversation without re-listening to the lesson. The dialogue track is just 10 to 30 seconds long, so it won't take you very long to cover both new and old information. This makes it perfect for a quick review of what you've just learned, and it helps keep it fresh in your brain. Second, you'll remember the conversations easier. Listen on repeat, like you would with a song, and the words, phrases, and grammar rules will stick better. And the more you come back to re-listen, the better it will all stick. Third, you'll speak more of your target language. So if you have 10, 20, or 100 dialogue tracks like that, then you have 10, 20, or 100 conversations that you'll know inside out and that you can use in real life. For example, 
Conversations like catching up with friends, ordering at a restaurant, talking about your family, introducing yourself, and much, much more. Fourth, you improve your listening skills and can immerse yourself in the language. So imagine you've finished 20 lessons and you've downloaded 20 dialogue tracks to your phone. That's 20 conversations. You can create a playlist and play those 20 tracks and get used to the language and immerse yourself. To recap what we just learned, here's what you do to make the most of the dialogue tracks. First, after you finish a lesson, download the dialogue track. Save it to your computer or phone so you can listen to it on repeat whenever possible. Just replace three to 15 minutes of music listening for some language review. Next, if you've finished 20 lessons, you should have 20 dialogue tracks. Use those to create a playlist of these dialogue tracks so that you can listen to all kinds of conversations. And finally, try shadowing the conversations that you hear. This will become super easy once you've heard the conversation enough times. But if you're still struggling with a word or two, go back to the lesson and check the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation to find the words you need to practice. Boost your speaking skills with the dialogue track and check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speak your target language with confidence and impress native speakers? When learning to speak a new language, you have lots of things to think about, including grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. Because you're thinking of all of these things and trying to speak, it can be difficult to communicate with confidence, especially in the beginning. This is why it's helpful to make confidence building exercises part of your language learning process. In this video, you'll learn seven ways to boost your confidence. One, read out loud. This might seem pretty basic, but it's a great way to practice speaking. Reading aloud lets you practice speaking without having to think about grammar or things to talk about. Reading out loud lets you focus on your pronunciation and the rhythm of the language. It can help you learn to speak more smoothly and quickly without even thinking about it. If you're using our lessons, read the dialogue out loud as you listen. You can read along with the dialogue tool, the lesson notes, or the transcript. Two, read like a child. This might sound strange, but think about children learning to read. They go slow and sound everything out. Maybe it takes two or three tries before they read a new word smoothly, and a few more tries before they can read it at a natural pace. This example applies to language learning too. If you find a complex sentence in something you're reading, read it slowly at first, then speed up. With practice, you'll be able to say it easily. It might feel a bit silly to speak very slowly, but this kind of practice can help you identify tough sounds you might miss or say incorrectly when reading quickly. Three, use the dialogue breakdown tool. If you're using our site, this is a great tool to take advantage of. It breaks down lesson conversations into individual lines. You can listen to the audio for each line, learn what each line means, and can reread and review as much as you want. Four, Use the voice recorder to record and compare yourself with native speakers. Just click on the microphone icon next to each line in the dialogue section. You can use this tool to perfect your pronunciation if you like, but this is also something you can use to work on speaking with confidence at native level speed. You'll find this tool in the dialogue section of all of our lessons. Five, repeat and review old lesson conversations. Reviewing what you've studied in the past is the best way to make sure you maintain what you've learned. Go back to older lessons, download the lesson dialogue tracks, and re-listen to the conversations again and again. Or you can reread the dialogue lines from previous lessons until you've mastered them all. Six, shadow conversations. Repeat what you hear out loud. This tactic is important, but it can be tricky when you're doing a brand new lesson. If you're reviewing dialogues from lessons you've done know, it's super easy to do. Just listen to the dialogue and repeat what you hear. Shadowing means mimicking the speaker as soon as they speak, following their intonation and rhythms as closely as possible. Seven, send recordings to your Premium Plus teacher. If you wanna speak with confidence, there's no better confidence boost than feedback from a native speaker. And you get just that with a Premium Plus teacher. 
You can record yourself reciting a lesson dialogue or any dialogue of your own, and your teacher will give you specific tips on how to improve. From the tips your teacher gives you, choose at least one and practice, practice, practice. Being able to react quickly and with confidence in a conversation is typically not something you can do on your first try, but if you continue practicing, you'll gradually find yourself speaking with ease. And for even more ways to build your speaking confidence, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. When you start out learning a foreign language, everything is exciting. You pick up new words and basic phrases fairly quickly. The first time you say a greeting or answer the question, how are you, you might even get a little thrill. Speaking fluently doesn't feel that far off. And at this point, it really does seem like language learning isn't all that difficult. But after a week or two, things begin to change. After a few weeks of study, you start to hit walls as you're faced with strange grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. Everything about learning a new language seemed promising and hopeful before, but now you start to realize how difficult it's going to be. Speaking the language now feels like a long, far-off goal that you may or may not achieve one day. But don't let the innocence of being an absolute beginner or the disillusionment of being an experienced learner discourage you from learning. Speaking a new language may not be as far off as you thought. In this video, we'll look at three tips to help you practice your speaking skills, no matter what level you're at. Number one, practice with native speakers. Practicing with native speakers is by far one of the most effective things you can do to improve your speaking abilities. Think of speaking a foreign language as riding a bike. After a certain point, you can't read or theorize about how to do it. You have to actually do it. If you can practice speaking with native speakers who correct you and give good feedback, then you'll be well on your way to improving your speaking. But where can you find native speakers to practice with? If you live in or near a major city, there's a good chance there are some native speakers there. You might even get lucky and discover an entire community. Do a little research into the demographics of your city, or simply keep your eyes open the next time you go through town. You can also attend a language exchange or cultural event. Meetup is a site for local enthusiast groups, and there are usually some language-speaking clubs or cultural clubs there. If you're unable to find native speakers where you live, then jump online and find them there. There are a lot of free online exchanges that allow you to connect with other language learners from all over the globe via text, audio, or video chat. Look for a speaker who is learning your native language. You can spend an hour or so helping each other in your respective target languages. This is a highly practical and helpful way to learn. It's also a great way to learn more directly about the culture you're studying in a real way. Number two, devote some time to learning pronunciation. Pronunciation often isn't the first skill people think of working on when learning a foreign language, but that doesn't mean that it isn't important. Truth be told, you don't absolutely need a great accent to speak or understand every language. However, a decent accent can vastly improve your listening and speaking abilities in ways you might not expect. Being able to pronounce words and sounds makes it a lot easier for you to remember and understand new words simply by hearing them. If you can physically make a sound with your mouth, then you can mentally remember it. Once you have a good accent, the new language won't sound as foreign as it once did, and you'll be able to understand rapid speech, as well as pick up the definition of new words based on their conversational context. But how can you improve your accent? If you're serious about developing your accent, then you'll want to dissect the language's sound system into its individual parts. First by letters, then individual words, followed by whole phrases. Start doing some mild research on the phonetics of your target language. You don't have to get too technical here. Just try to get an idea of some of the main differences between it and your native language. Find out where native speakers usually put their tongue while saying certain sounds, or pay attention to the shape of their mouths when they speak. Is it open or closed? These subtle differences are what really help you improve. Once you get the letters down, start listening to native audio and compare your pronunciation to the native speakers. Our language learning program's playback feature is a great way to accomplish this. Take a phrase from a lesson and start by practicing the individual words, playing the audio back at a slower speed and then again at a regular speed. 
After comparing your speech to the audio, combine the words to make complete phrases, imitating the intonation of the native speakers. This precise method of pronunciation practice is one of the most efficient and effective ways to learn pronunciation. Number three, imitate, don't just repeat. Anytime you speak, do your best to imitate the native speakers you've heard and practice with. Match the way their intonation rises and falls. Pay attention to their word order. It's even a good idea to match some of their body language. This degree of imitation will probably feel weird at first, but it reinforces fluency in the language and breaks you out of the parrot trap, where you simply learn and speak through rote memorization or repetition. This is a common problem that's often cited with other less effective language learning methods. Speaking a language is like playing music or dancing. You don't wanna just know it. You wanna live in the moment and feel it as you use it. You don't sit and think of what you're going to say in your native language before you say it. Why would you expect to do the same in a new one? Don't let ruffled expectations make you think that speaking a new language is impossible. Yes, it's difficult, but it probably isn't as difficult as you think it is. With a little determination and some faithful practice, you might be surprised how quick and how far you can progress. Use these tips to better practice the language and see real results in your speaking abilities. And for even more ways to practice your speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.